All right, so welcome back to yet another Bitwig tutorial. And in this one, we need to talk about the vocoder, uh, that weird thing that we got a few updates, uh, you know, ago. So, okay, so as soon as you put the vocoder right here, uh, <laughs> it looks very, very weird. And, you know, you cannot argue that it looks very weird. But right now we're gonna talk about uh, what this is and how it works. We are not gonna uh, talk about the history of uh, vocoders and everything else. We're just gonna just trying to make this one work and understand what all the controls are. If you want to know how a vocoder works, there are a million videos out there. So, okay, so I have a vocal. This is a free vocal that we get from a magazine. They're free. Don't you think it's time? Now, of course, they are not the best vocals ever, but they're gonna just make the trick. So as soon as you go to the vocoder and you uh, drop like a fresh vocoder, and I'm using a reverb, you know, a little bit of reverb, uh, and you do play, it sounds like this. <laughs> and of course, this is not acceptable. It sounds crazy. It doesn't sound like a vocoder. Now, what we associate as a vocoder is gonna be that vocoder sound, you know? The, uh, that sound. Okay. Okay, so first of all, you need to understand how a vocoder works. Uh, just a, you know, tiny bit. So right now I have this Don't vocal, think it's and I have this Pro Q3. So what I did, I created a, created a lot of notches right here. Can you see it? And the thing is that what the vocoder does is going to create a few bands, a lot of bands, depends on the vocoder, and it will create some notches on a very specific point. And these notches are going to be, you know, very wide or, you know, very, you know, not wide. So these notches will change how, uh, of course, the vocal behaves or whatever source that you're feeding behaves. So if I do play... It's gonna sound like this. Now, of course, it sounds like crap, but notice as, as soon as I move them, the tambour, the timber of the vocals are just changing. So while behind the scenes, the vocoder is gonna do something like this, but of course, uh, much, much better, and it's much more controlled. So, okay, so I'm gonna go to the vocoder, the one that we get. So what we get on the vocoder is this sound. Now, of course, how the vocoder works is that it needs a modulator and it needs a carrier. So the modulator is gonna be whatever it is that you're, you know, feeding, if it's a sound or a vocal. In this case, since we have this vocal in this track, the modulator is the vocal. So if I do play and I click on this one, you know, this is listen to the modulator. We have the vocal, right? So yeah, that's the modulator. Now, of course, you can click right here and you can even put whatever you want as a modulator. Maybe, a, you know, a an arpeggio, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can go and put it right there. In this case, we are going to use the vocals, which is whatever we have on the track. So you have very simple controls right here. So you have the volume, of course. It's going to affect the volume of the vocals in this case. Then you have the formant. And the formant, what it will do, it will just... It will just do that. Or you can go up. <laughs> okay, so that's what the, what the formant is going to do. And this one, it's going to be a brightness. It's going to make it brighter. And notice that the low end goes away. And the other way is the opposite, you know? It's just gonna kind of a filter the upper part. And this is happening on the vocals, you know, which is this material. Okay, so then you have the other controls, and this is a weird part of the of the vocoder. You have this one right here at the top, and notice is if I move it, it goes, you know, from, uh, you know, it moves on the x-axis. And then you, you have the other one, which is this one right here which is this one right here at the top. So these ones are just like, um, you know, uh, it's like a compressor. So this one is the low and this one is the high. And then on the other side, you want, you can have the one that goes in the left and the one that goes in the right. So this one's is a, it's just, a, it's just an EQ, kind of a, an EQ, one, a filter. So if I go to open an EQ, maybe not this one because this one is already a little bit crazy. So there you go, have a Pro-Q. So this one is, go, is, a, is a low pass. So if I go right here, is high pass in this case. If I do something like this and I do something like this right here, 
uh, it's equal, you know, to do uh, this, move this right here at the bottom and move right here at the top. So we are just kind of doing that. The thing is that, of course, we are applying this to the bow coded effect. That's that's the trick. So if I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna go and chop it. I'm gonna start chopping the high frequencies. And notice that the, the vocals is just much lower. It is because we are filtering all the highs. Same thing right here at the bottom. If I wanted to get just the high, no, notice that the vocoder reacts in a different way because we are not feeding this. Now, right now, of course, what we, we are using the carrier and the carrier is going to be the one that will just make the vocoder magic happen. By default, you get the noise and, you know, you have right here brown noise. That's why it sounds like this because we are using noise as a, as a carrier. Now, of course, this one you can cut and, you know, cut from the highs and cut from the lows. Very simple stuff. Then you have the other thing, this one. And I'm going to go and do some playing. And notice that as soon as I go on this one and start moving up, you're going to start to get less and less until we pretty much get nothing. So what this one is going to be is the floor. So, and I can actually show you right here on the on the Pro Q. Now, notice that right now the bulk coded sound has you know how this 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 bottom right here on the uh, right here. Maybe you can see it. So okay, so let's say that I don't want that. I just don't want this. You can of course filter that, and it's gonna go away. But maybe. What you want to do, you don't want to use that part to be affected on the vocal to the vocoder. So what you can do, you can start rising the floor. So notice that this is going to start going down because it's not being part of the vocoded sound. Notice, there we go. And it went away. If I go back, it's back. But if I go up, it's just removing that part. So now it's a bit more useful because we didn't care about this. We care just about this. So the same thing happens with the other thing. What happens if I have some, you know, upper peaks right here that I don't want? I'm going to go and do the opposite. I'm going to go and start just kind of a flattening everything. Notice that it's chopping everything that we had right here and we just get the lows. So this could be useful, it depends on the material that you're using. In this case, I would use the noise, uh, I would use the floor, just to remove the uh, annoying part right here. Okay, so we got the uh, filter and we, uh, you know, we got the ceiling and the floor. So then we have this right here. So what we have right here is uh, make it mono or make it stereo, right? Much better. Then you have the different bands. Now, of course, the the vocoder works on bands. You can have maybe a few bands, or you can have a lot of bands. Now, depending on how many bands you're using and whatever it is that you're using as a modulator to carrier, the sound is going to change. So notice if, if I go down. It's going to start, you know changing so we have less we have eight bands we have a less defined sound uh, which is good sometimes for a vocoder but maybe eight bands it's not a lot 16 or 24 uh, is a good amount then when you go up everything is going to be a bit more detailed that is that it's very detailed we can understand everything that the, the lady is saying but if i go down you know that definition goes away which is not a bad thing. Then you have the, the, the other thing. And right here, what you can do, remember what we, uh, you know, we talked about the peaks, uh, this peaks right here. So right here, you can control the wideness of the peaks, the, you know, the shape. And then you can uh, alter the bandwidth. So again, this one works just like the bands. You can have a narrow or a wide. And notice that the sound changes a lot. This is less defined. Much more defined, it's closer to the original voice. Now, of course, you can still go up and alter the bandwidth of this notch, and it's gonna change. Same thing if you go down. Now, of course, 
something very similar is going to happen with the other notch, which is are going to be a little bit narrower. And okay. Now one thing, notice that the carrier is all the way down, and it's because this will uh, this one will just mess with the volumes. So uh, sometimes uh, the volume is just going to go up, and you're going to start clipping. Now when you clip. It's gonna let you know right here. Notice I'm, I'm gonna go up and something red is gonna show up right there. Yeah, can you see it right there? That means that you're clipping. So you will need to either modify this what you're doing, but maybe you can just lower the volume. And you can rise this up. And it's not gonna clip anymore. So you know it was not that hard. Now we know how this does. You know what this means. That we need a modulator. We need a carrier. Uh, you know the vents and the notches right here. So now we are on the attack and release kind of thing. Now I'm gonna go and move away of this sound because it sucks. And I'm gonna go to something a bit more real. And we're gonna talk about how we can make this sound happen. I'm gonna go and do play, and of course much better. And notice I'm not using 80 bands, I'm just using much less bands. And I'm not doing a high number or a very low number. And uh, this is uh, uh, just to, you know, to get the sound that you want, you, you just need to do a little bit of experimentation. That's it. You just need to play around with this. Now, then we have the attack and the release. Now, of course, uh, this works just like a compressor, right? If it's a very short attack, everything that comes in with the vocals or whatever that you're using, uh, it's just gonna react right away. If I go and do go the other way Notice that the vocals are just kind of moving to the back And it's because it's you know Is one second of attack So it's a little bit lazy, so it starts reacting right away One millisecond is reacting right away same thing with the release. If I go all the way down, the release is very fast, right? So as soon as the person or the singer or whatever it is that you're using uh, ends or, you know, starts and, and saying something, uh, the uh, vocoder effects is just gonna go down, right? It's just like a compressor. Now what happens, well, for example, with a ADSR. Think of this as an, an AER control. Uh, you know, if I go fast, it's just gonna go fast. If I go slow, it's gonna go slow. And the release, what happens with a synthesizer, with the release of the ADSR, is that if I go and make it really long, the notes are going to sustain. That's what, happened, what happens with a synthesizer. Well, this is the same thing. I'm giving it five seconds of release. It's just, you know, sustaining pretty much everything. Notice that it's not going down. It's just sustaining right there. And if I go 10, this one is moving, not moving, moving. Now, of course, this depends on what you want to do, right? So you have one more feature before we go to the carrier and just, you know, talk about how we can make this vocoder sound happen with this uh, device is that you have a freeze control. So let's say that, you know, this lady is just singing, and then I want to uh, I want to freeze on Destiny, and it's gonna sustain that really cool effect. Now my recommendation is trying to freeze it on the vocal. There we go. So this is a nice feature, it's gonna go, uh, you know, this will be handy uh, in a couple of minutes. Now, let's talk about the carrier. So, uh, of course, right here, uh, you're gonna be, uh, to, to, just to get this vocoder sound, you're gonna need to put uh, an instrument or something that makes some kind of a noise. So in this case, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna mute this and I'm gonna go lower the volume because it's gonna go crazy and I'm gonna play. So this is what uh, the carrier is doing. So this instruction will be applied to on the vocoder on top of the vocals, you know, just on the vocals, just to get that vocoder sound. But this is the instruction that we are getting. Now, of course, right here, we can audition it. Right here, you get the volume. And then, of course, if you can, if you want, you have a, a blend control. 
course, I need to disable this. And you get, you know, a little bit of the vocoder and a little bit of the original voice if you must. There you go, you know, that can be modulated. So, now, how this works is that we need some kind of instruction because uh, the vocoder is following whatever we have on the carrier. And on the carrier right now, we just have these notes. Now, the thing is that these notes, they need to come some from somewhere. So, right now, they're coming from a polysynth, right? So, this is the polysynth. Now, of course, you can change the polysynth, you can make different noises. Or even you can, you know, if you don't want to use the Bitwig the, the device, you can go and use this one. I was, I'm using the OBXA from Arturia. You can use whatever synthesizer you wish. It doesn't matter. And of course, you need to, uh, you need to, uh, you need to know that uh, the sound is going to change if you use a different synthesizer. If you're using the polysynth, it's going to sound, you know, going to sound like this. But if I'm using this one, and I can use both at the same time for wish, it sounds very different, right? Super different. Very different. Just very different. And right here is where, uh, you know, uh, you need to go uh, and do some experimentation. You need to bring the synthesizer and just try to get different sounds just to get a different vocoder. Right here, I cannot teach you much. Now, the thing is that you need uh, the synthesizer. That's cool. You know, that's fine. But then we need a source because the synthesizer, in this case, is going to be following some notes. Now, on the on Bitwig, we need some MIDI information right here. I got the pads right here, right? So this is the MIDI information that we are hearing right there. If I grab this polysynth and I pull, put it right here and I solo this track, we're going to listen to the same thing. Now, what you need to do just to make it work, of course, you need to make, you know, just to, uh, you know, make a mid clip. You need to put a node receiver, this node receiver, and then, you know, uh, select what is the source, which is going to be the pad in this case. This is how we can make that vocoder sound works. You need a node receiver and then a synthesizer, whatever synthesizer, it doesn't matter. And of course, the carrier is going to react on the modulator and you're going to go and get the sweet vocoder, uh, you know, vocoder sound that we all want. Right. So that's it. We covered pretty much, uh, pretty much everything: the carrier, the modulators, the filters, the floor, the noise, the, the different bands, and uh, you know the uh, the attack and the release. And that's it. You know, is that just not a very hard device to understand? It's a very simple. The thing is that it just looks a little bit confusing, a little bit challenging. Uh, but now you know, now you know how to make it work. Now, of course, you can do a million things with this. You can use it this way and maybe chop and add some effects, maybe a phaser, a very long reverb or something like that. And just get a sound out of this. You can use the uh, common vocoder. And it is the only effect I'm using right now is a reverb. But if I, if I bring a better reverb, because let's just be honest, the reverb of... Uh, of Bidwig, it's not that good. Just a bit better. All right, so of course, I wouldn't say, you know, you know, the reverb is not better, it's not good. It's just very limited. Okay, so let me show you a different way or maybe, uh, you know, some other way of, of using of uh, this vocoder. So right here, right here, I have a pad. I'm gonna go and just play the sound. This is the sound. It's just some pads, right? It's nothing really super great. That's how it sounds. A pretty massive pad. Now, what you can do, you can throw a vocoder and notice I'm putting it after uh, the synthesizer. 
So this, of course, the sound that goes from here is going to go through here and something, of course, is going to is going to happen. Or maybe you want to use the, uh, you know, the vocals. That's, you know, a possibility. I'm going to go and just do play. Notice how different sounds it sounds. So what this is doing pretty much is listening to the vocals that we have right here. You know, that's the modulator. How can we make this happen? Well, if you click right here, you can select uh, select an audio receiver and get get it from the vocals that we have right here. So now what I'm doing, if I, if I unfreeze this, we can hear the vocals in the background. Now the blend control, the mix control is just going to be very useful. And notice that there's no carrier. Now if I go all the way, um, you know, 100%, you're just going to get the vocoder tone. But if I go right here at the, you know, make a nice blend, you're going to get a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now another thing that you can do, you can freeze the control on the vocals like we discussed uh, earlier. It's okay. I stopped it on the A. And we get that, that, you know, that kind of sound on the A. Now, if I bring a little bit of the pad, we are kind of getting that, you know, pad sound with a little bit of vocal at the top. Yeah, just a great sound. You can do a million things with this. Now, of course, if you want, you can bring, you know, Maybe you want to bring a, an LFO, something, you know, something simple. Let me just go a little bit faster. I'm going to go and just modulate this one. <laughs> there we go. All right, so this sky's the limit. Now, of course, now, now it's time for you to go and do some experimentation. That's it, because you need to experiment on, you know, on the synths that you're going to be using if you uh, use the vocoder like this, or maybe you want to blend it with a different, with some different instruments. Well, that it's just going to take a little bit of time because you need to uh, do a little bit of exploration. Uh, but that's the fun part, right? Okay, so hopefully you liked all of this. Uh, you find this useful and now the vocoder is not you know uh it's not a stranger uh, to you anymore um so remember to like and of course subscribe and see you on the next one